guys, what's up? My name is Rhiannon and welcome back to Few Acre Farm. I'm in my greenhouse today and I wanted to do a video talking about the greenhouse kit that I bought, modifications I've made to it, and then also some of the tools and equipment that I use to keep the greenhouse at the temperature that I want it. We are gardening in Central Virginia, which is in 7B. We're in the first week of February right now, and the low that I got last night, we actually had a cold snap. It was 18 degrees for a low last night. And that is pretty typical for this area. It really doesn't get into the single digits, and so I may not have to have some of the considerations that someone in a colder climate does. I think this greenhouse does perfectly well for the area that I'm in and also the purposes that I'm using it for. But if you live in a lower number growing zone, if it's a colder climate in general, you may have to make additional modifications to this greenhouse and or just consider a different option altogether. So I'm going to be telling you about this greenhouse I'm in currently along with some of the other options that I've used in the past and then also some of the ideas that I have for this specific greenhouse. So this is a 10 by 12 greenhouse kit that I bought from Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight is a hardware store. I know it's along the East Coast. I'm not sure if it has stores all over the U.S., but they do ship. So if you really like this kit and wanted to order it online, it could be shipped to you. The box that it came in, I remember it being fairly small, especially for the size of the greenhouse itself. I'm going to pull up the website. So this is the greenhouse kit that I bought. It's 10 by 12. Like I said, this is just Harbor Freight's website and regular price it is $1,000. Um, I remember I bought it on sale for about $800. So they do have occasional sales that you can get this purchased at. It's usually in the spring. So I would hold off until maybe later February, early March, and then see if they potentially will have a sale. Um, they also have a smaller option. So there's also this six by eight greenhouse. So you can see it is a considerable size difference. And then this one regular price is about $400. And I think this one also goes on sale as well. The kit itself, the structure for it is made out of aluminum metal. And then the panels are polycarbonate panels that are about five sixteenths inch, I would guess. So they're not super thick. And that's another reason why I say that I think this greenhouse is perfect for the climate that I'm living in. But if you live in a colder climate, you may want to consider a different options or potentially making more modifications to this same kit. It did come with all of the screws and hardware that were necessary for putting the whole thing together. And it took my boyfriend and I probably about three weeks to put everything together. It was a pain in the butt, I'm not gonna lie. The framework is a little bit difficult to maneuver, especially with just one person. So it was, I think, I don't think I could have put it together myself. So my boyfriend was a necessity to helping me construct the greenhouse. And then also the polycarbonate panels are like kites in the wind. They will blow away. And I will say I do think it's worth the extra effort to seal the ends of the polycarbonate panels because when they come, they're cut into all these different shapes to fit. You know, you can kind of see the roof behind me. It's kind of a, it's an A-frame roof. And so they had to cut the panels and they're open on either end. And so what that means is water and dirt, whatever else, can get into the ends of those panels. And so I taped the end of my panels with outdoor, it's supposed to be like weatherproof outdoor duct tape basically. Um, it is, it has come apart a little bit in the weather. Look, I don't think it looks awful. You could also potentially caulk the ends of the panels as well just to prevent anything from getting inside them and making it kind of like a cloudy appearance. The greenhouse manual recommended that you dig out the base of the greenhouse and I'll show y'all in a few minutes here what I'm talking about. It's about eight inches, I would say high at the base. And what the manual said, which I did not know um, before I purchased the greenhouse, is that you should dig a trench around where the base is going to sit and you should actually sink that greenhouse base into the ground so that it's a little bit more anchored. I did not know this before I purchased the greenhouse. And so I am I figured I would tell y'all now just in case you're interested in the kit. But I do think it would have been more stable if I had done that. But I don't think... I don't think it would have prevented me from constructing the wood frame that you see on the interior of the greenhouse right here just because we put the greenhouse in a pretty open area and so it does get some strong winds occasionally when we have storms so 
where this greenhouse is sitting currently, I do think it's necessary for to have a stronger frame built versus just leaving the kit by itself and ha just hoping that it's strong enough to withstand heavy weather. So I'm going to take y'all off of the tripod, walk outside, show you the exterior of the greenhouse, and then we'll come back in and look at the wood framework that we built along with some of the shelving units that I put in as well. And then I'm also going to show you the greenhouse heater and heat mats that I use to keep it at the temperature that I want it. All right, so this is the outside of the greenhouse. You can see the two barn doors here. They just slide open to either enter in or to open in the summertime when it gets hot and you want to ventilate the space out. It is sitting on a gravel pad that we put down this. Like I said, I didn't know that um, you were supposed to sink this base that you can see at the bottom here. Um, all of that per the manual should be dug out and put underground so that it will help stabilize the structure. You can see the two windows at the top right there and right there and then there's two more on the other side as well. I don't know the height of the greenhouse off the top of my head but I will find a description or I'll find a link to the greenhouse and put it down in the description below. That's the back of the greenhouse. We have this facing northeast and it does get a good amount of sunlight each day and you can see it's out in the open too so that is um you know that's why we decided to anchor it as well with that wood frame on the interior just so that when we got a bad storm it wouldn't blow away i'm going to walk you up close so that you can see the clips on how these panels are attached um so these are what hold the polycarb in place. Um, I'm kind of moving this right now just so that you can see and hear it. Um, they are on the flimsier side. Um, these, I didn't really trust these alone. And so what we also did is I took self-tapping screws and actually drilled it through the polycarbonate panel into the aluminum framework of the greenhouse as well. So you can see one there. We also did like there's two on the bottom right there um, and I think that that significantly helped keep all of our panels because I have seen a lot of people post about this kit and their panels will either blow away or the structure will like just completely collapse um, onto itself and so I think the modifications we made really helped out. So I'm going to come back into the greenhouse here because it's very cold. So we're back in the interior portion of the greenhouse here and you can see these shelves that we built along with the 4x4 posts that we put in the corners and then also in the middle just to stabilize the structure itself. We've got one in the back here. This is just um, a 2x4 that we run along the top to keep the panels from moving too much. There's another 4x4. 4x4 four four, and then one in this corner as well. So we don't have anything supporting the um, the front part of the greenhouse. I don't really think it's necessary though just with everything else that we have kind of holding the structure together. You can see the shelving units that we built um, on either side. This is the long side that we have our shelves on. This is a shorter shelf over here, and then we've got just a work table um, that is a little bit better height for me to bend over and work at versus trying to, you know, make soil blocks on a three foot height um, shelving unit that I have here. So this is a good amount of space. Like I said, it's a 10 by 12 greenhouse. So each of these shelves is a little bit less than six feet. Um, these trays right here are both sitting on heat mats and then how I got power and water into the greenhouse was I just dug out this corner here and it's closest to the house. I don't know if you can see it through the greenhouse panels, but our house is right there. So we've got power and water coming through the corner right here. And I just dug out a little hole and put a PVC, um, kind of, not a 90 degree elbow, but it was kind of like a sloping elbow and then ran the power strip and the hose through there and it has worked perfectly so far. Um, I packed it in real good with gravel and dirt so that cold air can't seep through there. So I'm gonna back up a little bit here and then we'll do kind of a close up inspection of one of these shelves. 
So we've got four by fours for the base of the shelves. And then the bottom one has this, um, this elbow that comes out and supports it along the bottom here so that it can hold more weight. And then the top is just made of welded wire. So I'll actually show you up here just so that you can actually see. Um, I just bought this at Tractor Supply. I'm not sure the, um, the diameter of this, but it's pretty, I mean, it's hard to bend. Like I can't really bend this just with my hands. I had to do this with a pair of pliers and then a hammer. Um, but it's pretty strong, I would say, especially the bottom one. The top shelves are just supported with this vertical two by four along the center here. Um, and also this shelf, the top shelf is a little bit more narrow than the bottom one. And so I can't fit quite as many trees on it, but it does help conserve space when I need it. So the top shelves also have these elbows that um, come in and are supported on the sides here. They're attached to the center four by fours and then the four by fours on either end as well. And the whole unit itself is pretty strong. Like I have stood, um, you know, I've kind of like used the upper shelves to like grab onto and I've stood on these before to get to the, um, where is it at? The windows up here um, to like open and close. I wouldn't recommend that <laughs> probably. Um, I'm not a super heavy person, but I'm also not, you know, I'm also not very light either. Um, so I think, I think we did a good job of making them pretty stable, but I don't know if I want to make a habit out of standing on these shelves. So another option that I've used in here, and then also people can use by itself as well, is something like this. This I got at Tractor Supply. It's called a dual-sided walk-in greenhouse. So it has two doors. Sorry, there's kind of a shadow on the box over here. Um, but you can see where the, the door is like rolled up at the top here. And you can walk into it. The dimensions... We can see it down here are 4.7 feet wide, 2.4 feet deep, and then 6.4 feet high. So it's a it's a decent sized little greenhouse. I actually purchased this, and like I said, I think I got this at Tractor Supply, maybe for about fifty dollars, I think. Um, and I purchased this to actually use inside of this greenhouse as kind of just a secondary protection. So when I had purchased that greenhouse that I just showed you, it was kind of more for protecting like more frost tender vegetables, like my peppers and tomatoes that I had started. And it was at that awkward time where it's like either late February, early March, where you're still kind of getting these harder freezes. Um, and I also didn't have the equipment that I do now. So I didn't have like a nicer greenhouse heater. I didn't really... I had some heat mats, but they weren't like, they weren't really professional grade heat mats that were consistently keeping my seedling trays warm. And so I had bought that little greenhouse to put a radiator heater in and keep my seedlings at a warmer temperature than it would be inside of the greenhouse. When I have the radiator heater in this big greenhouse, so it's a 10 by 12 space, and then it's also, it's very tall, you know, I cannot, I cannot touch the ceiling. So you're losing a lot of warm air as heat rises to the roof of the greenhouse. And so if you make a smaller um, structure for your heater, it's going to be better insulated. It's going to be able to heat whatever is inside of that smaller space better and more efficiently. So the idea of that greenhouse was just to kind of better insulate inside of this one. And so it would already be a little bit warmer in here, but it would be able to maintain that temperature inside of the smaller greenhouse with the heater in that. That's another concept that kind of inspired me to maybe in the future make another modification to this greenhouse. So it's still the same idea. You're making a greenhouse inside of a greenhouse to better insulate and conserve energy. Along the back behind me, I have the two four by fours that I was telling you about. So what I have considered doing is basically putting two, um, two holders that could hold a length of PVC pipe along each of the four by fours right here. I'd put the PVC, I'd hang it horizontally in between the two four by fours and then take plastic, either greenhouse plastic or um, like painter's plastic that you can either get at Lowe's or Home Depot for a little bit cheaper. And I would drape, starting from the bottom at the back of the shelves, I would drape plastic up and over the PVC pipe and then along the front of the shelf here. 
and I can do it on, on this whole side. So PVC along the whole end, drape the plastic, and you would basically make a little mini greenhouse inside of this greenhouse. And then I could just take a heater, put it underneath the shelves, and it would have a much smaller space to heat versus trying to heat this whole 10 by 12 area. That is something that you could potentially do if you live in a colder climate. I may still do that uh, where I am in zone 7B. However, I don't think that it's really necessary. I have a better heater now. I have better heat mats. So I think I am able to maintain my temperature a little bit better than I did last year. However, if I did have a cold snap, I think it would be helpful to just have that extra precaution to be able to protect my seedlings if I really needed it. I'm gonna take y'all off the tripod again and give y'all a close up of the heater and heat mats that I bought this year. They were a little bit pricier than the alternative equipment that I was using last year to keep the greenhouse warm, but I think they are a lot more efficient and they have done a better job of keeping the greenhouse at a steady temperature versus like more steep fluctuations. I measure the temperature in here actually through a Bluetooth thermometer that I can give you a close up of in a second as well. It's hooked up to an app on my phone and so I get a timeline of the temperatures in the greenhouse at different parts of the day. It shows me the maximum high temperature that I got to that day and then also the lowest temperature that it reached at night as well. So let's look at that. All right, so I've spun y'all around again and like I was telling you earlier, these shelves are six foot in each section. So this is six foot right here. This is another six foot and then this length of the greenhouse is 12 foot altogether. The shelves are two feet deep and so these heat mats are five foot by a little bit less than two feet. I think when I measured it was like one foot seven inches or something like that. And these are commercial grade heat mats so they're not cheap. I think I paid about $200 for each. Um, their SunPad Pro is the brand name and this is the control element that I bought with the first heat mat. So it doesn't, I'm not sure why it looks like it's flashing on the camera. It doesn't do that in person. Um, but as you can see, it says it's 58.6 degrees on the heat mat. And that's just connected to this probe right here that I have sitting in the tray. So this little guy just reads the temperature of the soil and then it heats the heat mats accordingly. This heat mat is considered the master heat mat that's that's hooked up to the control system up here and so if we go to this side I have this other heat mat. It was a little bit less expensive just because it didn't come with the control panel. It's, it's the same brand SunPad Pro and they are both connected up here. Let me see if I can find it right here. So they're daisy chained together and you just take the cords, plug them both up. And so this heat mat is being heated at the same temperature as this one over here based off of the probe that's in that tray. The other heating element that I have is this bio green control system and this heats my heater and fan. And so same thing, it's not actually like flashing in real life. Um, I think it may just be the plastic covering that it has over it. So this is plugged up to my electrical outlet. Plugged into it is my heater. It's the same brand. It's BioGreen Heater. And you can also purchase this just by itself and control it manually. So there's there's knobs on this side. So if you really wanted to, you could adjust it yourself and then not worry about the control system. I like the kind of fail proof um, option of just having that control do it for me because I can set a desired temperature and it will automatically shut on and off. So right now um, you can see the little fan in the back there. It's not blowing, there's no heat coming out of this. And so the temperature, is saying that it is 68 degrees so that is actually warmer than what I have it set as so it automatically shut off it's no longer heating and then once it falls below a certain temperature that I set it will automatically turn on. So the heater also has its own probe you can see it's hanging out in this tray right here that's the end of it that's what it looks like and I have it just sitting in the soil here and so it is reading the temperature of the soil on this specific tray and the control system here 
has its own thermometer that is telling it, that's telling my heater to either turn on or turn off depending on what the probe temperature is reading. This down here is the Bluetooth thermometer that I was telling you about. This thermometer is always going to read a little bit cooler than the temperature on the heat mats because it's not sitting on the heat mats. It is only reading the air temperature in the greenhouse. So it's saying it's 56 degrees Fahrenheit air temperature in the greenhouse right now. And then if you come back up here, it's saying it's 68 degrees. So pretty consistently, I've seen that this Bluetooth thermometer that's reading the air temperature is always going to be about 10 degrees cooler than what the actual soil temperature is on my heat mats. Another thing that I need to keep in mind is that this side of the greenhouse is always going to be a little bit cooler than the back end of the greenhouse because it's closer to the door. So if I ever open the door in the morning before I go to work, I can always count on this side of the greenhouse being just a little bit cooler. Over here, when I'm by the door, this thermometer probe is reading 64 degrees, where my other one more towards the center of the greenhouse is reading 68 degrees. So that's a four degrees difference, which can make or break some plants, especially when it's kind of closer to that 40 degree threshold. Like I, so I can take that information and I can say that I wanna keep like my frost tender things especially things that are going to be stunted by more cooler weather, like my peppers, my tomatoes. I'm going to keep on this side of the greenhouse versus this side because it's always going to be a little bit warmer over here. And while I just have my camera out, I'm going to give you all a little, some little close-ups of my plants because I'm super excited about them. These are the larkspur that I never thought were going to germinate. They took a super long time to grow, but here they are. And these are eucalyptus, lisianthus. These haven't really germinated yet. You can see some green on this tray. There's another one right there. I'm not sure what this is. I know it's not lisianthus. Um, so I must have accidentally dropped some seed onto these trays. I'm just leaving them for right now though. These are some nice little lettuce starts that I have. This is a lot of stock. There's more stock, and I believe these, yeah, these are hollyhocks right here. I've got lots of cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower that are germinating from the last video that I showed y'all when I sowed all of those seeds. And then these are my seed onion starts. I've also started some milkweed that I have in two of these trays over here. I just went ahead and put these in the big soil blocks, um, but I don't think, it doesn't look like these have germinated at all yet. So one last thing that I wanted to show y'all was some weather stripping that I put up. Here's the best example, I think. So you can see this white strip up here. And then also, if I can show y'all behind here, I have, um, this is like foam. This is like foam insulation that I put um, along these gaps between the polycarbonate panels and then the aluminum frame. And those I just got in the insulation section of, I think, Lowe's or Home Depot probably. Um, and I just kind of tried to close in all of the gaps where cold air was allowed to come in and warm air was allowed to escape. And so I did that all over. I put that foam insulation all along the gaps, you know, along the roof and in between the panels. Um, just to try to minimize the amount of cold air that was getting in. I'm going to put y'all back on the tripod. So that concludes the greenhouse tour for the day. If y'all have any suggestions on other modifications that I could do to it, please let me know because I'm always looking to try new things. I will say in the summertime, it does get very hot in the greenhouse, even when I have all the windows open, when I have the doors open and the fan on. These polycarbonate panels do a great job at reflecting sunlight. And so sometimes it can be over 120 degrees in here in the summertime. So I would just be mindful of that. I don't use this greenhouse as a production greenhouse during the summertime. This is a seed starting greenhouse for me. That is the only thing that I really use that for in the summertime. I do grow some leafy greens in here in the winter time, just in like big pot containers. Otherwise, I don't think this greenhouse is well enough temperature controlled. That is just something to keep in mind if you have, like I use plastic shelving in here along the back. I'll put black plastic shelving that I bought um, 
just to kind of maximize my seed storing space or my tray storing space when I have a lot of things started. And I have to be mindful and remember to take those shelving units out of here because they will actually melt. And then same thing with my 10 by 20 trays. If I leave them in here or pots, like anything black plastic will melt in this greenhouse in the summertime because like I said, it gets over 120 degrees in here, even with all the doors open, ventilation, all that stuff. I don't really think this is a great option for a production greenhouse in my climate. I think maybe if I had a better fan and ventilation control system, I could potentially do that, but I have plenty of space outside of the greenhouse that I can grow all of my flowers and veggies. And so I'm personally not really interested in trying to use it as such. If I really wanted something, if I really wanted a cover space to grow production crops in, I would probably get a high tunnel. I don't really think that this is the best option for that situation. If y'all have any suggestions on future modifications that I could make, I'm always willing to try out new things. And I love seeing people's different ideas for other modifications that they've made to this greenhouse. I'm actually in a Facebook group. I'll try to pull it up just so, just in case y'all are interested. Um, but this Facebook group is designated to these types of Harbor Freight greenhouse kits. So either the 10 by 12 option or the six by eight option. Okay, so I found it. So it's called the Harbor Freight Greenhouse Sharing Group. So this is what it looks like. And I'm gonna scroll up. As you can see, people have crazy ideas that they come up with for these greenhouses. So this is actually um, two 10 by 12 greenhouses that someone put together. Um, there's all kinds of pictures of what people have done and different modifications that they've made to it. Um, and I think it's just really interesting to see. I'm always looking for new ideas for things to try out. So if y'all have any suggestions or if you have any experiences with these greenhouses, please let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. I do have a video that I'm putting together now on seed starting supplies, so the specific brands that I use to buy all my pots and trays from, so look for that coming out in the future soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see y'all next time. Bye.